Hi, this is Marty Glickman speaking for Sports Champions, and I'm talking with one of the outstanding young players in baseball today, Chicago White Sox third baseman, Pete Ward. Pete, you're from an active athletic background. Your father played on the National Hockey League. Was there ever any possibility of your going into hockey? Well, there really wasn't, Marty. I've always been a very enthusiastic fan of hockey, but we moved to uh, Portland, Oregon, out of Montreal in 1945, and I was pretty young, and there really isn't that much opportunity out in Portland for hockey, so that kind of uh, eliminated my possibilities of becoming a hockey player. What play should a young third baseman work at extra hard? Well, I think primarily a young third baseman or any third baseman should uh, try and get in front of the ball on all ground balls if he can. And all the other stuff, the fancy stuff, the backhand stuff, the bare hand uh, play coming in, that is only something that is uh, just something that when you can't get in front of the ball and it's very unusual when this play has to be made. And if this can be emphasized to youngsters uh, at an early age, I think that it'll really help them become better ball players. One of the prime requisites of a third baseman is that good, strong arm. Do you advocate throwing that ball overhand from virtually every position at third base? Yes, I say that uh, just about all the time, if you can, throw the ball overhand. This is one of the troubles that I had in my first season with Chicago at third base. I'd come down, throw a little bit uh, three-quarter, and uh, the ball seemed to tail a little bit. And as a third baseman, if you come over, you get on top of the ball and you get a true spin on the ball. Uh, it really helps out. One of the prettiest plays to watch is the around the horn double play from third to second to first. A young ball player playing third base often has difficulty with us because he's not sure exactly when to throw that ball to second. Is there any right time to make that throw? Where should the throw be aimed? Well, I think that this is uh, something that's worked out between a third baseman and a second baseman, but on every play, before the ball is pitched, the third baseman should be thinking if the ball is hit to him and at what speed, what he will do with the ball. He has to know the speed of the runner, the speed of the runner on first base as well as the batter. Um, even if there's a, just say there's a real uh, slow man at first, running towards first base and there's a ball hit to you, and even if you don't get the guy in second, you'll still get him at first, so it's worth a gamble. So there's different situations, but the thing is to know ahead of time what's going to happen. It seems that there's a natural tendency for young ball players to shy away from hard-hit ground balls. When they get down for it, they sort of pull their head back or duck away from it. What can you do about it, Pete? Well, I think that uh, this is something that's drilled into kids uh, as they get a little bit older. People always tell them that uh, the ball's hurt if they hit them, and the, uh, the same thing comes from as you get older. Some people say your spikes, when you start wearing spikes, you get hurt. This is something that's talked into individuals. And, uh, there isn't really that many ball players getting hurt by balls hit right at them. And I think that once you can convince a youngster that uh, to, if he stays in front of the ball, keeps his body in front of the ball, he's going to usually catch the thing and uh, no one's going to get hurt. This is mostly psychological, I believe. You had a marvelous rookie season with the White Sox in 1963, following five years on the Baltimore farm system. What was the most important lesson you learned in your first major league season? Well, I, actually, I think the most important thing I learned all season is uh, the fact to give the pitchers the credit that they deserve. Pitchers are really, uh, really tough, and you get up to the major league level, and you're seeing a real good one every day. And if a ball player lets himself down mentally, even for a couple days, it'll, it'll tell on his average at the end of the season. So you just have to keep yourself up and give due respect to all your competition. In your earlier years in the minor leagues, you hit with good power, but you weren't a serious home run threat. However, in recent years, you've hit the home run consistently. Is there any way to explain this? Well, yes, when I uh, broke into baseball, I hit with my hands about an inch apart in professional baseball. And uh, from there, the next season, I went to about two or three inches apart, and then I wound up, I was hitting with my hands about four or five inches apart on the baseball bat. And actually, it looked like I was using a bunt grip. But I had real good success with this. I hit 345 uh, in 1960, I believe, in the 3I League, uh, which is Class B baseball. And so they said, don't, you have pretty good success with it, so don't change it. And then I moved up to Double A baseball the following season, and uh, they seemed to jam me quite a bit. I wasn't getting the bat around, and I moved and I put my bat or put my hands on the end of the bat the next year after having a very mediocre year in 1961. As a left-handed batter, you're called upon to use the drag bunt upon occasion. What are the tips about drag bunting? Well, I think that this is one of the most important things in baseball. A good bunter can, in can increase his batting average 20 points, and if you look at your uh, big league averages today, 20 points is a difference between uh, your big money and, and your uh, also ran money, but bunting is very important. Al Lopez stresses this, and he stresses it not only uh, as for base hits, but for sacrifices. He has his pitchers working on it continually, day after day after day, as well as the regulars. But, Bunting, if you have natural speed and you are a left-handed hitter, 
you can really use it as an advantage, and even if you don't have the, the real good advantage. How about that drag bunt itself? Do you start down the first baseline before you meet the ball? Yeah, so I'd say that your real good drag bunters do. When that ball is bunted, is at the point of the contact. I mean, they're running as soon as they contact the ball. Well, Pete Ward, thank you very much for talking with us.